Good morning and welcome to Passion Church online service. I want to wish you a, a very, very happy Easter Resurrection Sunday. I'm so glad that you can join Cindy and I from our home. And uh, we just want to want you to know we love you. And uh, it's a great time to be alive despite all the things that are going on. Yeah. We just want to share some thoughts with you from our home to your home today, uh, really about hope. And that's really what Resurrection Sunday is all about. It's about hope. Mm -hmm. You know, the first uh, Easter, it wasn't about pageantry. It wasn't about packed auditoriums. It wasn't about orchestras playing. It was about uh, a group of disciples huddled in their home and uh, most of them were afraid. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So we hope uh, that you're not afraid, but from our home to your home, we're so glad uh, to be uh, with you today and to share some things with you. Uh, just before I read, well, I'm gonna read from Luke 24, just a few verses. Uh, Luke 24, one, if you wanna follow along with us there. It says, on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices, that they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were w wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you when he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. That's really what we're celebrating today is the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the hope that it brings to us. You know, uh, I remember reading uh, about some researchers. There were two research, uh, researchers, and they uh, did an experiment involving two rats. Mm -hmm. I remember this <laughs> and, and, and the first rat, they put in a tub of water mm -hmm. with high walls yeah. in a completely dark room. The rat swam for three minutes, and he gave up. Yeah. Took the same set of uh, uh, circumstances with the second rat, rat, except they let one little beam of light Great come light. in mm -hmm. and that rat swam for 36 hours or 700 times longer wow. that's the thing about hope yeah. hope is just like that light shining into the dark places of our lives and you know uh on resurrection morning the the disciples and others were huddled in their room afraid but when they saw jesus when jesus appeared to them it was like a light shining mm -hmm. into the dark places you know, in their life and dispelling the fears and dispelling uh, all the things that uh, were negative uh, about the crucifixion of Jesus, about the situation in our lives. And so, you know, today, uh, I hope that you will think about Easter Sunday and resurrection as also a hope shining into your life, into your circumstances. You know, hope enables us mm -hmm. to see beyond our present circumstances and into the future God has for us. And Amen. we've experienced that before, haven't we? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I remember, and this was a long time ago, but I remember um, Dodie Osteen sharing something, I think it was on a cassette tape, that's how long ago it was. <laughs> and um, she, was ex she was telling us about her experience when she was going through chemotherapy. And you know, things looked really bad for her. And she decided to take pictures of her when she was healthy, when she was enjoying life, you know. Um, she had pictures of her riding horseback with her kids and just, just enjoying life to the max. And she put those pictures on her refrigerator. And she also put some pictures over her bathroom vanity on her mirror. So when she got up in the morning, that was the first thing that she saw. And, and I know some people critique that, you know, that's visualization, this and that, but you know what? You've got to keep it in front of you. You've got to keep that vision of what your, your target is, which it, in her case was to be healthy again. Okay, well, you know, th that was just something that, that gave her a ray of light and she, she was able to focus on that, Absolutely. focus on Jesus, you know, being her salvation, but, but you know, just picturing what it would be like again uh, for her to enjoy life again. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, uh, while we're in this crisis and going through these things, you know, there can be any number of, of, of negative impacts that's hit you 
uh, might be, maybe you're laid off from work, maybe yeah. some, a family member is suffering from the coronavirus or whatever it might be. And there's plenty of opportunity to just uh, kind of look around us and say, boy, it's really bad. And mm -hmm. it, it can really uh, lead to discouragement sometimes. So what hope does is it helps us to see ahead. Sometimes mm -hmm. I refer to hope as like a telescope. Mm -hmm. You know, our circumstances, when we look around us, it's like looking through a microscope. But when you look through a telescope, you're looking out beyond where you're at. That's right. And that's what hope does for us. You know, uh, in Lamentations, I'm gonna read this scripture. Hope changes our expectations. And you know, uh, all around us, there are negative reports. And you know, not everybody's trying to be negative. A lot of it's, they're just reporting I mean, this is the way it is. This is the present reality. This is the facts and the circumstance. The hope helps us to move and see beyond our present circumstances and to realize, you know, this is not forever. Right. That there is a future that God has for us. It's still bright. It's still good. Mm -hmm. God still has a plan for us. Yeah. And in Lamentations, I'm going to read this in chapter 3. Verse 19, he said, I remembered my affliction and my wondering, the bitterness and the gall, and I well remember them and my soul is downcast within me. You know, if all we do is dwell on the circumstances around us, mm -hmm. if all we do is dwell on, you know, what AP is saying or what Fox is saying or what CNN say, you know, you're going to be like this guy. You're going to be, you know, you're going to be kind of downcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, he goes on to say, he said, but I call this to mind, and therefore I vote. Now listen, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's what hope does. Mm -hmm. Hope switches from our circumstances mm -hmm. onto God, mm -hmm. onto his faithfulness, mm -hmm. and onto his promise. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, Cindy and I want to encourage you, listen, be, be like the writer here in Lamentations, you know, lift up your eyes from your circumstance all around you. It's real. It's a fact. Mm -hmm. But listen, God's word and God's character and God's faithfulness will create a hope within you. Amen. And, you know, uh, the writer in Hebrew says this, that hope is like an anchor for the soul. Mm -hmm. You know, the, and the Bible describes the soul as being, you know, our, our mind, our will and our emotions. And, you know. Uh, when life hits you, you know, whether it's this present crisis or some other crisis, <clears throat> I mean, the first thing that engages is your feelings. Mm -hmm. I can remember uh, way back, referring back to the circumstances you were talking about mm -hmm. when you got the bad report about cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, we w went in for a routine checkup. It was just a routine thing. I mean, we were both young. We were in our 30s. I mean, 35. Yeah, there was no expectation of this. And all of a yeah. sudden, bam, you get the evil report. Yeah. You know, it's cancer. And, you know, and the first thing that happens is your your emotions go into, uh, you know, high gear mm -hmm. and everything can be the same thing, you know, in any crisis, in this present crisis. You know, what we had to do is we had to grab hold yeah. of something that was bigger than our feelings bigger than our own ability. And that really was God and his promise. It yeah. was the hope that became the anchor for our soul. Yeah, you have to shake it off because initially that fear tries to come on everybody. I mean, none of us are exempt from that initial right. fear that comes on you when something like that happens. You get a bad report or things are going on around you, but you have to come to a point where you don't allow it to get into your spirit. It gets, it may, it may have affected your soul, okay, your mind or your will or your emotions, but you don't let it get penetrate into your spirit. So you just have to, you have to shake it off at one point and make a decision. Okay, you know what? All right, so this is what I'm dealing with, but I'm putting this behind me, so to speak. I'm not, I'm not believing it doesn't exist. I, I understand it exists, but I am going to attack it in the spirit and, and I'm going to have an, an attitude about it where I'm not going to allow myself to stay in fear or to be in fear. Absolutely. Amen. I want to read that scripture I was referring to in Hebrews 6. The writer says this. He said, uh, because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose. Listen, remember this. No matter what your circumstances may be, what's going on around us, God has an unchanging purpose and Amen. plan for your life. Mm -hmm. And the circumstances do not change it. Fear cannot change it as long as you will stay anchored in God. He said, because God wanted to make it clear 
to the heirs of what was promised. That's us. The purpose is very clear to us who are heirs. He confirmed it with an oath. And God did this so that uh, by two unchangeable things, which is impossible for God to lie, That's we right. have fled to hold, uh, to take hold of the hope set before us as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Mm -hmm. Listen, you hold on to God. You hold on to the promise of God and the word of God. God's plan and purpose is secure. Listen, uh, things all around you may be shaken, but God's kingdom and God himself is secure. He is steadfast and nothing has changed concerning his plan, his promise or his purpose for our life. And that is the anchor that we have to lay hold of. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. He's our rock. He's our fortress. He is our constant help in time of need. Amen. And, you know, Paul said this. He said that in 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, that helmet, that, that hope is like a helmet to protect our minds from the blows of fear and negativity. I want to read that over there. 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5. Let me get over there. In verse 8. Notice what he says here. He says, he said, uh, he said, we belong to the day. Let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. You know, as Cindy said, none of us are immune to thoughts of, of fear and negativity coming on us at times. We're all uh, can be attacked that way. But mm -hmm. Paul said this. He said, let hope be like a helmet that you wear over your mind and over your thoughts. And when those uh, attacks come on those negative thoughts and, and hopelessness or fear tries to attack, that's when you have to, you have to readjust if it was your helmet. Yeah. You have to put your thoughts back on God yeah. and back on the promise yeah. of God and back on the future that God has for you. Right. And when we do that, then fear may come at us, thoughts may hit us, but they will not abide. They will not right. steal our peace, yeah. which God wants us to have peace. And really, you know, that's what uh, we're talking about on Resurrection Sunday. Mm -hmm. Because of what Jesus did, we can have perfect peace mm -hmm. with God. We can have perfect peace within ourselves, no matter what our circumstances may be. Because he lives, the old song used to say, I can face tomorrow. Yeah. And that is so yeah. true yeah. concerning our future and the hope that he has for us. And you know what this brings to mind? Another old song from a long time ago. Thou, O Lord, art a shield about me. You're my glory and the lifter of my head. Sometimes our head is cast down, you know, but he is our shield and he lifts our head. He encourages us and, and, and gives us the strength to go on. Absolutely. Okay. You know, the writer said over uh, in Jeremiah, God said this. He said, I know the plans that I have for you to give you a future mm -hmm. and a hope. Mm -hmm. And that's what more than anything today, as you are there with your family and your home, you're, you're, you're shut in, you know, not getting out very much. All these reports that you're hearing. Listen, above all, on this Easter Sunday in 2020, you mark it down. You know, God has a future and a hope for you and for your family. Yes, he does. I, I, I sent out uh, my Easter letter uh, to you guys this week. And in it, I mentioned this. And, and, and God just prompted this so much on my heart that 2020 does not have to be a lost year, yeah. you know, where we just have a bunker mentality and we're just trying to get through and just kind of get by. And, and, and I understand all that, but listen, don't let the circumstances or fears uh, steal this year from you. You still are connected to God. God's kingdom is uh, unchangeable and immovable and his plan and his purpose for you has not changed and for your children it has not changed but you lay hold of the promise of God you lay hold of the word of God you lay hold of the hope that God has for you concerning uh, your future you know if you think about it you know all those disciples you know after Jesus was crucified everything looked dark mm -hmm. I mean it it, from the natural, it looked like it's over, you know, that, 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 you know, what Jesus had promised somehow Jesus, you know, he didn't come through, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I know a lot of people, you know, as they go through this crisis, you know, people say, well, where's God in this? And why did God allow this to happen? And all those kind of things. And, you know, 
now is not the time when we're going to try to answer all those. But I want to say this on that first Easter morning, you know, they were all, they all had questions. They all had fears about mm -hmm. what had happened and what was going on. It didn't look good. No, it didn't look good. <laughs> but suddenly when these women went to, uh, to that tomb and all of a sudden they saw that the tomb was empty yeah. and you read on down there and suddenly Jesus appeared to them in the middle of their uh, fears and right there behind uh, locked doors and closed doors, all of a sudden, can you imagine how they felt? Mm. I mean, it had to be an incredible feeling of amazement and joy overflowing them that they went from, from fear to absolutely, uh, you know, amazement and yeah. absolutely joy Elation. and delight. Yeah. Elation, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I want to encourage you, you know, uh, during the, today, this Easter Sunday day, listen, everything that's going on around you, listen, lift your eyes up and look to Jesus, the resurrected one. Look to him who has overcome all the troubles of this world, who's overcome all the works of the enemy. Yeah. And listen, let hope arise, let joy arise, and let peace rule your heart today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the scripture says, um, sorrow may last for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And we're waiting for that morning, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, we are. Resurrection morning. We're waiting mm -hmm. for that resurrection yeah. morning. Yeah. So I want to encourage you today, you know, let hope arise in you. Yeah. Let, let the, put on the helmet of hope. Let hope be that anchor for your soul. Mm -hmm. And you know, and listen, celebrate. Mm -hmm. Celebrate the Lord's Day, celebrate Easter, celebrate there with your family. You know, just, uh, I mean, after uh, you've had your online service time with us and we're gonna have communion here in just a few moments. Yeah. But listen, you know, celebrate it. Remind one another that Jesus is raised from the dead, that mm -hmm. he's seated at the right hand, that that God is with you and with your family, and he's going to bring you and bring us at Passion Church and bring all his church all around the world. He's going to bring us through this. Amen. We're going to have victory, mm -hmm. and the church is going to be stronger than we've ever been before. Amen. This is our greatest hour. Mm -hmm. And you know, I found this out. You know, uh, in the midst of the test and trial, that's when our faith is strengthened. Mm -hmm. It absolutely is. And you know, and that's where our focus becomes more clear mm -hmm. and the things that are superficial fall away. Yeah. And that's really what's happening during this time. It's like a winnowing, you know, it's like a, uh, all the dross and stuff is being skimmed off because we're getting down to what really matters. Right. You know, our faith in God, our hope in Him, our fa love for our family and the love for the family of God. You know, that's really what it's all about. It gets down to the essentials in life. Yeah. But take time today and be thankful for your family. Be thankful for Jesus and all that he's done for us and uh, our salvation and through his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And this Easter can really be one of the greatest Easter's special. of all, very special, mm -hmm. a time where we really are focused That's on right. what it's all about and can appreciate having our family near. Maybe your family is not near, but sometime today I would encourage you, reach out to your family. Mm -hmm. Let this be a family day. Maybe you can reach out to them, you know, do some FaceTime or call them on the phone or some way, mm -hmm. if at all possible, you know, connect and reconnect with your family today. Amen. You know, as we are thinking about Easter and resurrection and hope today, uh, Cindy and I, we, we've got our elements here and I hope that you've got your family gathered around there and you've got uh, your elements there. And we want to just take a few moments and have a family time of communion together. You know, Paul wrote over in 1 Corinthians 11, he said, I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you, this do in remembrance of me. Then he, in the same way, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm thinking about it as we prepare to take uh, communion together, over in Psalm 103, I'm going to read that to you. As we're thinking about covenant, 
you know, we, we think, of course, and rightly so, about the forgiveness of sins. And, of course, that is first and foremost. But the covenant that God has for us through the, through the blood, the shed blood, and the broken body of Jesus, it covers uh, so much more. Not only our sins, that's, that's first and foremost, but it also covers so many other things. Healing, mm -hmm. protection, mm -hmm. provision, peace of mind. And I want to remind you of that in Psalm 103, uh, the, the psalmist is writing, he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things and renews your youth like the eagle. Today, maybe... As I said earlier, maybe you're, you're facing, maybe a loved one is sick, uh, maybe a member of your family, maybe, uh, maybe you've been laid off work, maybe your, your place of employment is closed down and, and you really need God to come through for your life. I want to tell you something, as we partake of communion today, yes, remember, and first and foremost, be grateful, heaven is our home, mm -hmm. that we, our sins are forgiven. And that no matter what happens, nothing can separate us from God. Nothing can separate us from His love and His care. But this covenant also means that there's healing for you and for your loved ones. This covenant also means that your God, our God, will supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Right. Remember that as we partake of the covenant meal today. Now, Cindy and I are going to take the bread right here. This bread, it represents the broken body of Jesus. The Bible says that by the stripes laid on Jesus, that healing was supplied for us. So right now, as we partake of this covenant together, if you need healing in your body for anything, even this coronavirus, if you need healing in your body right now, we're going to pray for you and we're going to believe through the power of the broken body of the covenant that we have with Jesus, that on this resurrection uh, morning, that God's going to heal your body. Paul wrote in Romans 8, 11, he said, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, lives in us, he will quicken, make alive our mortal bodies. Father, thank you for the broken body of Jesus right now. Father, wherever people are partaking of this communion together with us on this Easter resurrection morning, I thank you, Lord, that their faith is released right now with Cindy and I. And we declare in Jesus' name yes, that sickness and disease have to leave your body. Right. The coronavirus has to leave your body. Jesus that healing and health is the bread of the children. Amen. Father, right now, by faith, we partake of the broken body of Jesus, broken for us, deliverance from every sickness and from every disease in your body now, in Jesus' name. Let's eat together. Thank you, Father. I thank you for healing right now. I thank you. Lord, wherever people are watching this, I thank you that you touch their bodies right now. You drive sickness and disease from their bodies, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for healing and delivering them by the power of the broken body of Jesus, by the covenant that we have with you. Paul also said on that same night that Jesus, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, the blood of of the new covenant that is shed for many. In the Old Testament, as Israel was getting ready to observe the first Passover and the, the, the angel of death was coming over every house and Moses instructed the people of God, he said, put the blood over the doorpost of your home. And he said, when I see the blood, I will pass over. Mm -hmm. You know, Sin and I have been praying Psalm 91 over you and that was a psalm written by Moses. And Moses in that psalm he said he said that that the the disease uh, the the, the uh, sickness the the uh, what's plague. the word I'm trying to think of uh, plague. the plague thank you <laughs> the plague he said it would it would not come near you it would pass over you and it was because of the blood and as we partake of this cup right now 
Let this blood afresh and anew by faith be applied to your lives and over the doorpost of your home. That means all those who are in your family, we can apply that blood. We can by faith uh, put that blood over them to protect them from coronavirus or any other plague that the enemy might uh, try to bring against us. Father, thank you for the blood of the new covenant, the blood of Jesus. Lord, that blood that is so powerful, so efficacious, Lord, to deliver us, Lord, from our sins, but also from the works of the devil, from any plague that would try to come near our home. Father, I thank you for the precious blood of the Lamb. And Lord, Cindy and I apply it here to our lives, to our family, and to the, the, to the doorpost of our home and our family. And by faith, we declare that the destroyer will not come near That's us right. or in our home. In Jesus' name, Thank you, Lord. let's drink together. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you right now. I declare that the blood is applied to our homes and to those, uh, Lord, who are watching this morning. I thank you the blood of the Lamb is applied. I thank you on this Easter Sunday, Lord, while we remember the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, we also remember the blood of the covenant, yes. the broken body for us, the Savior raised from the dead, ratifying this covenant, Father, that we are now a part of. Thank you, Father, for delivering everyone, and Father, for safety and protection mm -hmm. throughout the oncoming year, Father, for every household and every family in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, uh, again, I want to thank you so much for joining us today on our online service. And just before uh, we let you go, before we end this time, I want to encourage you, you know, with your giving, uh, you know, during this time, Passion Church is continuing to reach out and minister to those. Uh, we're feeding a lot of people. A lot of people are having difficulty, you know, putting food on the table. We're still supplying food boxes for them. We're supporting the food bank, which is feeding lots and lots of people. Uh, uh, the ministries with our missionaries overseas, they're also hard hit. And many of them surely don't have the, the resources that we have. And we're continuing to support them as well. So I want you to know that you're giving is still having an impact for the kingdom. It is still lifting uh, the and then supplying the needs and hurts of others around you. And I'll remind you in Genesis 26, it says that Isaac in the year of famine, it says that he planted his seed. You know, in a famine is not the best time to be planting uh, seeds with any great expectation. And maybe you're thinking, you know, uh, I'm going through some, pretty tough times myself. Things are looking uncertain in my future. Well, I just want to encourage you, listen, be like, uh, be like Isaac, because he had a covenant, you have a covenant, an even better covenant than he had. Mm -hmm. Plant your seeds, even though it looks like it's uncertain future. And it says that when he planted his seed, that God gave him back a harvest of a hundred times over. I want to encourage you. Listen, God's going to meet your need, Passion Church. Amen. He's going to meet your need. Listen, sow your seed to lift others and to help them and to meet their need. And what you make happen for others, I promise you, God's going to make happen for you. That's right. I want to pray over you just one more time before we let you go. And just know this, that Cindy and I love you. We're praying for you daily. We're lifting you up before the Father. We are, are praying, especially Psalm 91, over you and your household and your family. Father, I thank you again for the precious people that are watching this video, for the family of Passion Church. God, I thank you that you are a very present help in their time of trouble. Mm -hmm. You are their refuge. You are their fortress. Yes. I again declare because of the blood of Jesus, Father, yes. no plague will come near them, Father. Mm -hmm. No pestilence, Father. Thank you that you supply yes. all that they need, Father, spirit, soul, body, financially, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Cindy and I pray this over you in Jesus' name. Have Amen. a wonderful day today, the Lord's Resurrection Sunday day, mm -hmm. and be thankful in all that you do today. Give thanks to Him and rejoice, Passion Church. God bless you.